Okay guys, so we're out here looking for some wild edibles and I can tell you, you know, once fall and winter come in, wild edibles become tough. Imagine if there was, you know, a foot of snow on the ground right now. There's not. Temperatures are chilly. Um, it's been very cold. It's killed everything back off. You know, it's, it's the time of death now. It's winter time. It's the time that everything dies and it'll come back in the spring. But we can still find some things if we look. And I'm just in an area right here. And like I told you before, you know, with wild edibles, the best thing that you can do for wild edibles is find yourself some kind of a fieldy area that's not in the woods because that's where the most of them are going to be. And there's several wild edibles right here um, that I can use. Again, you know, your wild edibles, unless you can find rosettes, most of that stuff's going to be pretty well past it. Um, let me get this camera down here where you guys can see. See if I can kind of zoom in on some of this stuff. Maybe. I'll try it and see what happens here. Okay, this, this is yellow dock, okay, or curly dock, and I know that because I can see the red vein in the, in the leaves. So this is an edible, all right? There's a lot of this right here, but really the best edible on that is the young leaves, okay? And there's not too many young leaves here. Most of this stuff has died and gone out, you know? So you've got to kind of fish around in here and see what you can find and make sure that you're only getting the right plant. So this plant right here, okay? would be a pretty good candidate. The only problem is, look at the new leaves on it. How many, how many are there? You know, you got <laughs> that one, you got a few right there, and you got one right there that's about half gone, and the rest of the stuff is pretty much useless unless you wanna eat the stem, you know, which is very stringy and full of mucilage anyway. So you're not getting a whole lot of bang for your buck looking for wild edibles in the wintertime, and it's gonna take you some time to do that. Um, looking around here, you know, I can see some other stuff coming that's, you know, very small in here. Um, but there's nothing in here really. There's another small yellow dock leaf right there that's pretty edible still. So, I mean, you see, you're not going to get much. Um, you can look around and you can find them, but you really got to be selective at what you're looking at. There's another yellow dock plant right here that I can pull out. And again, you know, by pulling the roots out, that plant's not going to come back next year. So you got to be kind of selective about that too. But, you know, you're looking for that new growth is what you're really looking for um, as far as good wild edibles go. And there's just not going to be that much of it out here right now. Um, you can find it, but it's going to be few and far between. So we're going to move on, look some other places. There's some other green stuff down here, but I'm not sure, not positive exactly what it is. So I'm not going to eat it. I have my suspicions of what it is, but unless I know for sure, I'm not going to eat it. So I'll find as many young dock leaves in this area as I can find because there's plenty of it right here, you know, and I can just take that and it's just like a trail nibble at that point. You know, I'm not going to take this stuff back and put it in my food. Let me zoom back out of this for a minute, guys. I'm not going to take this stuff back and put it in my food because it's just a waste of my time. I hate vegetables anyway. So I'll just pinch that root stock off the bottom of it and just eat it. You know, I'll eat it now as a trail nibble, get it over with because... Like I said, I'm not a vegetable eater, so for me to eat this stuff in my food, no, probably not going to happen. Okay, here's some more greens right here, and you know, again, when they're small, it's hard to tell what they are, but I would say that's either some kind of plantain or some kind of a dock because it's real heavy, heavily veined on the back of the leaf. I know there's not any poisonous plants that look like that, so that's going to be pretty safe to eat. And there's quite a bit of that right here. You can see these young leaves right here. That's the kind of stuff I'm going to pick as a trail nibble to take with me and try to eat is this little small stuff like that. And if I'm not positive what it is, you know, I'm not going to eat a ton of it either. I'm going to eat some of it and then I'm going to move on. And if I don't get sick off of it or anything, then I can eat more the next day because I remember where it's at. But that gives me a little bit of greens, you know, to get some of those vitamins and nutrients out of those greens. But there's quite a bit of that right here. You can see a lot of it right there around these black walnuts. There's a black walnut laying right there that's past it. But there's quite a bit of those little greens right here that'll be edible. So I can just go through and pick those and trail nibble those on my way. Okay, here's some... Okay, guys, here's some oxalis. Let's see there clover or it's wood sorrel could be either one it doesn't matter they're both edible there's quite a bit of it right here you know i can pick this and this tastes kind of lemony so it's not horrible bad um, you could even use it for you know a seasoning in your food any of these are fine to eat and they're pretty young 
and small so I can just pick these like I said and trail nibble them as I go or I could take them back and put them in my food too but this is some type of a clover or a wood sorrel one of the two I'd say it's probably wood sorrel but it could be clover it's definitely an oxalis either way and you'd have to eat an awful lot of this to hurt you a lot of people say oxalic acid is bad for you but you'd have to eat bushels of this before it would ever hurt you that's for sure okay guys there's some uh, plantain right here this is longleaf plantain plantago family that's a no-brainer i can eat that it's full of mucilage you know but uh it's so it's kind of stringy when you try to eat it but all these young leaves and you got some more wood sorrel or clover growing right here beside that too all of this stuff no problem edible you know again trail nibble i'm not going to put this stuff in my food necessarily but it's a good trail nibble to keep the vitamins you know going in my body and keep the nutrients from these vegetables going in and this is what i would do as far as you know a trek or a scout i just nibble on this stuff on the trail but this wouldn't be my main meal i'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy that's just all there is to that okay guys here's some more of that onion that we picked the other day there's plenty of that out here as well um there's a couple more bulbs right here that you can see this is an oniony garlicky type stuff and you know guy was asking about a poisonous plant that looked like an onion i'm not sure what that is to be honest with you but the fact of the matter is you know uh, part of you know herbalism or collecting wild edibles is to be able to identify positively what you are looking at or what you're going to put in your mouth and the rule of thumb with onions is and garlic if it smells like an onion it's an onion if it doesn't smell like an onion you don't eat it um, same thing with mint you know if it smells like a mint it's a mint if it doesn't smell like a mint it's probably not a mint but these onions are plentiful out here so we do have that as well that we can put in our food anytime we want to and it's a good wild edible that's easily found out here until the snow falls